Hello! There's a lot of information out there about the pros and cons of choosing either an online course or an on-campus course. I'm making this video to make your decision easier. Knowing what you're getting yourself into is really important, so please consider the following. Professor Holmes and Raid from the Virginia Commonwealth University researched the performance of exams taken by online students and in-person students of a counselor education program, both instructed by Dr. Robinson. They looked at the improvement of scores between the pre-test and the post-test, and they compared the results between the online and in-person students. They said that although both groups of students scored significantly higher on the post-test and on the pre-test, there were no significant differences in performance between the two groups. This shows how education-wise, you as a student will learn the material to the same extent. Do you show up to class though? Gerd Kortemeyer et al. work in educational development and technology. They studied how student attendance of lectures is affected by whether the lecture was in-person, online, or hybrid. Student attendance can affect how students do in their courses. The students who preferred online lectures mainly mentioned how the lecture halls were too distracting. We aren't always at 100%. Students who suffer from depression said it was easier to just watch an online lecture, while other students claimed that they felt depressed that their friends were not there to support them during lecture due to them talking about difficult topics. Another point was that a student could not focus on the lecture due to their ADHD. Many students, including those that mentioned how mental health affected their education, mentioned how the ability to speed up a video, pause it, and go back to wherever you want to watch was something that was really useful and helpful. I find it extremely useful when I need to take notes. In a lecture, you cannot do that. And some students expressed that the professor sometimes had illegible handwriting and or had pacing that was way too fast. The differences between online and on-campus courses only start at education. Let's go look at some general pros and cons. This is a summary of our previous section. Feel free to pause if you want to keep reading, but now it's time to talk about general pros and cons. Simon A. Lee and Rajiv K. Gupta, instructors in the Department of Educational Psychology at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, stated that current literature suggests that fully blown distance education facilitates and maximizes student learning more effectively than in the traditional face-to-face -face course format. Some of the benefits of distance education include remote learning from anywhere with an internet connection, flexibility and freedom to work at your own pace, no parking or commuting. This is a big one for me because that commuting time could be used to work on assignments and those extra 20 to 40 minutes I spend to get to school and back it would be very useful and very helpful. No need to get ready to go to school since you can do all your learning from home. Online learning is not for everyone though. Gupta quotes Armrod saying that online learning requires self-discipline and self-motivation. If you have those things, you might thrive in an online learning environment. The major drawback of online learning is that you need to have a modern computer and pretty decent internet speeds or else it'll be a very bad experience for you. Another drawback is that it requires you to already have some background knowledge on how to work a computer. Which if you're watching this, you probably already do. But technical difficulties can still arise during your school time. Life is unpredictable, even in the comfort of your own home. Here's a summary of that section. Uh, you can pause it if you'd like. But either way, it's time to proceed. Let's say you're leaning towards entering an online school. There are distinctions between big online courses and small ones. Patrick R. Lowenthal and his colleagues are educational technology researchers. They quote Russell and Curtis's survey research that states, large class sizes lead to higher dropout rates, lower attendance, more cheating, reduced breadth and depth of subject matter, less instructor-student interaction, less instructor feedback, increased reliance on the lecture, and less student involvement in the class. In the survey, they found that students had limited student-to-student -student and student-to-instructor interaction, both in terms of quantity and quality, in the high enrollment course. I have experienced this myself in my own online chemistry course. There's no requirement to ever meet with your instructor, and also there's no interaction with other chemistry students. It's just you and your own work, and hopefully you get a good grade. So I can attest to this data. In Lowenthal's article, they quote Dragon Peltier saying that students found that larger courses were better structured and the faculty teaching these larger courses provided better guidance compared to those teaching smaller courses. This source though is far older than Russell's, making it more outdated. The article concludes with the idea that smaller online courses are better for student learning. Let's hear from those who have lived through their decisions.
You probably know the deal by now. How do others feel? Lowenthal quoted Parsons Pollard et al. saying, Students enrolled in the high enrollment course were less satisfied than the students enrolled in the face-to-face -face course. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of students were given the option or were forced to take online courses. Many of them, including the professor, were unfamiliar with the technology required for a quality online course. Dr. Nabil Hassan al kumaym an assistant professor at the Department of Technology Management at University Technical Malaysia, Malacca, and his team wanted to explore the challenges and problems encountered by university students during the COVID-19 pandemic more deeply. They found that on May 27, 2020, the Ministry of Higher Education in Malaysia declared that all university courses must be conducted fully online, with no face-to-face -face teaching allowed until December 31st, 2020. That's basically the whole second half of that year. As you can imagine, people probably were freaking out and were very confused and stressed out about suddenly being forced to take online courses. And you'd be right. At the same time that the declaration was made, students started to complain about the anxieties and challenges that came with online learning. More than two-thirds of the students felt overloaded with their online courses. They said that some university instructors and students have little experience or training using, assessing, and managing online distance education, which means some instructors and students are facing extra challenges because of a lack of online teaching and learning experience. To reiterate, not knowing how to use a computer would be very detrimental to your online learning experience. Holmes and Raid quoted more at all, saying that they administered an open-ended survey to students in an assistive technology rehabilitation counseling course and found mixed results regarding student perception. The survey showed that students experienced schedule flexibility, improved computer and internet skills, positive interaction between classmates and exchange of ideas, useful course materials, and information exchanged throughout the course. But they also had problems with technology, felt disconnected from classmates, and felt like they had too much coursework. Although, as Holmes quoted Murdoch and Williams, both the online and in-person groups said that they experienced community within their classrooms and felt that they were responsible for learning their course material. Holmes and Ray quote a study from Summers et al. which analyzed differences in course satisfaction between online and on-campus statistics courses. The statistics courses were taught by the same professor. This study found that online students were less satisfied with instructor explanations, enthusiasm, openness to students, interest in student learning, quality of class discussion, quality of questions and problems, and evaluation and grading. In Kortemeyer's study, they determined how some preferred online lectures due to them providing less downtime between lectures and just being able to get stuff done. Instead of having that dead period where nothing is happening, others preferred the comfort of their own home, while some stayed home to avoid a long commute. Some expressed how some lectures did not feel as interactive as they needed to be. Students only experienced an online course once. What do the people who have to teach their online course over and over again think? There were a few repeated points from previous sections, which I did not include on the account that I am running out of space. Uh, so if you want to look at the repeated ones there in some of the previous sections already mentioned, these are from student opinions. So keep that in mind when establishing what you think is more important for you. That's the whole goal of this. So these are just opinions from other students, if that means much to you. Now, let's move on to what professors think. Lowenthal quoted Berenson, Boyles, and Weaver as identifying emotional intelligence as a predictor of student success in an online course. If you have those traits, online school might be where you will thrive. Lowenthal quotes one of the faculty in their experiment, saying that they designed a larger online course with clear deadlines, realistic deadlines, Communication is clear on all aspects of grading, well-designed syllabus and updates in the beginning of the semester to let students know what is expected of them. They also say that there's barely any interaction between students and instructors. I believe that a professor's perspective and opinion are important in this topic. They provide a different view and that could be very useful in you coming up to your own decision, really hearing from someone who is on the other end of this experience. Now it's time for the long-awaited conclusion.
What I've learned from this research project is that choosing whether to take an online course or to take it in person depends mostly on your own ability to use the technology that's required. You could be the best student in the world, but if you don't know how to use a computer or if you have garbage internet or no internet at all, it won't matter since you won't be able to even access the online course. If you're planning on taking an online course, try to avoid taking one that has a huge number of students taking it with the same professor because of all the negatives I've listed previously. Whichever path you choose, I'll end this video by wishing you luck on your future endeavors. Goodbye.